Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here, with a video where we will look at all of the Battlefield 1 DLC packs and try to determine which one is the best. If you enjoy this video, please paint a Modest Pelican gaming mural on the side of your local Aldi supermarket, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. So way back in March 2017, the French DLC They Shall Not Pass was released. We saw players race through fields of poppies, spend entire games burning their feet, and run circles around a giant concrete fort, throwing an excessive amount of grenades at each other. The French DLC also brought some impressive weapons, including the ribeye rolls, the shower shot, and the RSC. It took a long time to release after the game was launched, but you know what they say, the best things in life are worth waiting for. Well, at least that's what I tell myself about my sex life. This first instalment seemed to have a good mix of infantry and vehicle combat for players to enjoy, and with 6 maps in total, it was definitely a great addition to Battlefield 1. The Russian snowstorm in the name of the Tsar came next, and the wide open winter environments definitely brought some welcomed variety to the game. And if you are a fan of sniping, then you will probably make these maps even whiter, as they truly are a scout class's dream. In the name of the Tsar also had some super fun cool weapon challenges, such as killing 15 enemies with tripwire bombs, and also shooting down two planes with an LMG. No, but in all seriousness, I might be in the minority of players who actually quite enjoy completing the more difficult challenges. Here are some fun challenges I came up with that DICE could have used. Destroy 10 planes in one round using only the trench knife. Teabag 30 opponents whilst singing the Spongebob theme song and send 5 vulgar hate messages after you lose a round of conquest. Anyway, the Russian DLC was a lot of fun, bringing 6 new maps and a nice selection of weapons. Fuck yes, Obrez. Turning Tides was next, and focused on naval combat, though funnily enough, the non-naval infantry only map Achibaba has actually become one of my favourite maps to play on. This DLC had less content than the first two instalments, but given the focus on amphibious warfare, it still felt incredibly fresh. There were only four maps in this pack, but apparently size doesn't matter. However, if you are feeling like you need to compensate for something, there are no shortage of big ass boats to do so. I had a lot of fun playing Turning Tides, but did notice that any game had the potential to turn into a spawn trap. And I also find that Conquest Assault doesn't always work as well as the developers intended to. All things considered, Turning Tides provided some incredibly fun gameplay moments and was a solid addition to the game. The Apocalypse DLC just released and brought with it 3 new maps and 2 new air maps. I am literally awful at flying planes, so I found the 2 new air maps about as appealing as joining the Church of Scientology. The map Passchendaele definitely encompasses the meaning of Apocalypse, but they could have also named this map Where's Wally, because you can't bloody see anyone, though I guess that is part of the appeal. I have enjoyed my time on the Apocalypse DLC, but it did have the worst launch of all of the map packs with a lot of weird glitches. I am sure in time this will all be fixed, but given the extent of the problems, it is still worth noting. In my opinion, the Battlefield 1 DLC has been overall superb. I'll be honest though, I love the vanilla base game maps the most, but I have thoroughly enjoyed each new addition to the game. In order of best to worst, I think the French They Shall Not Pass DLC was the best, then In the Name of the Tsar, then Turning Tides, and finally Apocalypse. Funnily enough, this is the order the map packs were released in. Also, the first two installments had more content, which is always going to help. I am really interested to hear your opinions in the comments below, and feel free to vote on my Twitter poll as it would be cool to see which DLC the Pelican community thinks is the best. Also dudes, I found this really simple strategy that can honestly improve your gameplay by so much. It is extremely easy to do, and thanks to this one tactic my kill death ratio is now 10, and I literally never miss a shot. This easy to learn simple tactic is... To unlock this secret simple tactic, please make an unauthorized cryptocurrency transfer of $500 into Modest Pelican's Lithuanian bank account via the dark web.
The alias for the account is Papa Pelly. Thank you so much for shopping with the Pelican and have a pelly rific day. Oh, and if you don't transfer the money, go Pelly yourself. Seems legit. You should do that. Anyway, that's it from me. A huge thank you to everyone for watching, commenting, and liking my videos. And to my patrons, lads, the generosity is unbelievable and it is so appreciated. So thank you so much for supporting the channel. I hope you all had a good week. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.